I have to say my mind is really starting to change on using some of these cloud providers that I was really excited about in the past. And it's not just me saying that, it's the people actually running these companies. I mean, for example, there was a pretty big security vulnerability with uh, Next.js and there's a little asterisk on that like very big vulnerability because that's one of the things I'm going to be discussing. But first of all, take a look at this. Cloudflare released Diverse, uh, which looks like they named that intentionally. And what it's used to do is take Next.js projects and automatically deploy them to Cloudflare. And the reason that the tweet says it's a pretty relevant time to launch this is because of the Next.js vulnerability. And so the CEO of Cloudflare retweeted this saying, save money, get better performance and work with a company that actually cares about security. So classic Twitter subtweeting, hashtag no brainer. And if you're wondering who he was talking about, it's not that hard to figure out when you see the first reply is the CEO of Next.js, or sorry, not Next.js, but Vercel, but practically the same thing. I uh, That's a Freudian slip, but it's the exact same thing. Cloudflare is responsible for one of the worst security disasters in internet history. We tried to use your product and had nonstop incidents and had to move off. We mitigate DDoS attacks you proxy to us daily. You're slow. Despite your constant cheap shots, we're engaging with your team for better collaboration in the future. We want a secure web. And... It's not that he was wrong in anything he said necessarily, but obviously both of these guys are not truth seeking. They're trying to build their businesses and they're doing that by tearing each other's businesses down. But I think both of them have very good points. And that's kind of, you know, the major takeaway I think for me and probably a lot of developers is that it makes me hesitant to use either of their products, not just one of them. So I don't think either of them is actually winning the fight. And I mean, it's still entertaining. It's still funny. I saw this, uh, the Cloudflare CEO response with like a meme and I thought it was really funny but if you're thinking that this is just the start of this beef it's actually not I mean if you go a couple months back it looks like Vercel CEO was already taking uh you know swings at Cloudflare extremely proud of the Vercel Edge security team what you see below are DDoS mitigations that kicked in protecting a customer from a popular CDN provider that was supposed to do this job in the first place so I don't think that necessarily implies that Cloudflare is less secure it's that looks like some of those DDoS attacks are coming from their servers so they're being mal maliciously used to uh, uh, make attacks and it looks like maybe Cloudflare isn't doing a good job of preventing that probably because um, maybe, you know, I don't want to assume malicious intentions, but maybe just because they're getting paid by those people. But I don't think they would probably do that. I don't think they would actually know about one of their customers doing something malicious and then just let them do it. But who knows? This is the real world after all. Now, in terms of how big this security vulnerability was, a little bit of context is that, first of all, the Next.js CEO apologized to some extent, he said, we missed the mark on how we communicated this because, yeah, they did kind of try to brush it under the rug. Now, with that said, I don't think the impact of this issue was as big as some people are making it out to seem, but I think the communication was pretty bad. For example, I think maybe one of the reasons Cloudflare might be mad about this is because it looks like they tried to uh, block uh, this vulnerability. They tried to fix it on their end. So any Next.js app deployed to Cloudflare would not be... Uh, susceptible to this issue, but it looks like they had to actually make that rule opt in because some people were seeing false positives. So you can see why that would be frustrating from Cloudflare's perspective. No matter what they do, they're just not in control. And so that's one of the things I'm going to be discussing. It's kind of a philosophical thing and not to turn it into a video about artificial intelligence, like the AI hype stuff that's happening. But I do think there are a few parallels because that's one of the things that happens. It's not just about these cloud providers. It's not just about that. I think back to a few experiences in my life, for example, with front-end development, when you're using a component library, whatever, whatever framework you're using, React or Angular, the component library solves a lot of problems for you. It saves you a lot of time, but you give up a lot of control. And that's the exact same thing, I think, with the AI stuff. When you have agents building your app, it's good when it's good. Like when it's going good, it's going great. But when it's bad, it's awful. What are you going to do? You lost control. You have a bunch of code that was written. You don't even understand it. And it's not just that. It takes me back to also the experience I had working at Google, which 
in some ways is similar to using a product like Vercel, which in theory is supposed to solve a lot of problems for you. And it actually does. It does do that. You have to give Vercel some credit. Now, the thing that people argue is that one, it's overpriced. Working at Google, we didn't really have that problem because money isn't really an issue. But the other thing is you give up control. Now, the great thing about Google and any sort of big tech company where you're using a lot of internal tools is that if you have a problem with that internal tool, well, the person who's supposed to fix it works at the company. So in theory, you should be able to deal with the most important issues. And in theory, you should be able to do that with a company like Vercel as well, because they're putting their reputation on the line. They want to fix all these vulnerabilities. They don't want there to be any issues, but when an issue does happen, they kind of quietly brush it under the rug. And in this time, this case, they did fix the vulnerability. It was kind of a middleware bypass. Let's kind of get into that a little bit because it sounds worse than it is. I'm not an XJS expert, but if you go through like an article like this one, it basically tells you that you could just add a header to the requests and the Next.js middleware would sort of allow you to bypass certain checks such as authentication. So obviously that's not a good thing. Next.js did fix this. It took them a few weeks. And I think that's one of the reasons people are a bit frustrated. And another thing, take a look at this. They patched this. And so now if you're using Vercel, you're automatically protected. But if you're not, and you don't know about this vulnerability, which is very fair, because again, there's not been a lot of communication on Twitter or anywhere really. So if you don't know about it and you're not using Vercel, you're self-hosting Next.js, which means you're not a customer of Vercel. Well, they don't like, now you're kind of screwed. I mean, of course you could just uh, upgrade it yourself, but if you didn't know, well, you're screwed. and uh, Vercel, what do they care? You're not even one of their paying customers. You're just using their open source software and you're deploying it yourself. So you're not paying them. So, you know, they don't really care that much. They don't have that incentive to communicate proactively. Now to get into some of the technical details, I'm not an expert on Next.js, but I saw this tweet and it looks like there's a lot of truth to it. One interesting thing about the Next.js CVE that not a lot of people are talking about, it only affects your app if you fully rely on middleware for auth and not authing subsequent API requests, which uh, th that sounds like it only affects your app if you have no idea what you're doing, because of course you should be uh, doing per specific authentication checks for certain actions on your application. Like, you know, on my site, for example, on neat code, I'm going to have my own logic for running a uh, rate limiting and for uh, making sure like if, if you're a pro user, then you get access to the content. And if you're not, then, you know, you don't. And so I have my own logic checks for that. It's not just happening on the middleware end. So it sounds like this issue would not actually affect very many people, but obviously some people might be affected. So again, communication matters. So we do have to be honest. I'm not trying to attack any of the companies that I'm talking about in this video. I'm just trying to give you the news and also give you a little bit of my opinion at the same time. Now, with all that said, I would very much agree with this tweet from Tiger, a very nice guy who is very, very good at front end development. He, that's kind of one of the things he talks about. And he mentions that he really doesn't like Next.js. And from his experience using Remix, which is a lot more platform agnostic, is literally better in every way. And now I'm not an expert on the front end side with all the thousand different tools that have been released over the last several years, but I tend to agree. I would personally be a little bit hesitant to give up so much control of my application and how it's hosted and how it's built in the future. Even though in the past, my opinion was that there is always going to be the trade-off of a moving fast and accepting less control or having more control, but then possibly moving slower. So I kind of fall somewhere in the middle of that. For example, when it comes to AI, I'm not a fan of having some agents build my entire application, but using something like Cursor or Copilot or something where it's kind of like an autocomplete for you and you have some control of which direction to move it. I'm a big fan of that because it helps you move faster while keeping a good amount of control over your code base, over the technical decisions and the design decisions, which are very, very important and are only going to become more and more important as you know, a lot of these AI applications are going to have some major, major security vulnerabilities. It's very reasonable that we're going to start seeing a lot of issues pop up due to AI.